So we'll restart Merc and get back to the box to enter our name and number. Register and we've hit our breakpoint. So this time we'll use F7 to step into the function. So this is the start of the function, setting up a stack frame uh, for variables and such. Uh, move through each of this. At the moment I'm looking for interesting calls to other functions or manipulations of our string with our name and uh, number. So here we go, here's a call where we've pushed our name and number as arguments and we call and similar to last time there's a test and a jump um, immediately after the call. So this is quite possibly a function call within the function um, that also determines whether or not the serial number is valid. So we'll step in with F7. So here's the start of the, the function that we're in now. Um, there's a function call here where we've pushed one value on the stack. We've pushed our username on the stack call and we test the return value with 5. Our return value is A or 10 and then there's a jump at that point, a uh, jump if, less, if not less than, um, which we did. So perhaps that function call was some kind of get length of string or something like that and it's validating that it's at least five characters because it, it's returned ten and our string is is ten characters long. Um, after that there's it's pushed our serial number on the stack and also this byte value 2d. So let's use F7 to step in and have a look at that. Now this is one of the good things about Oli Debug in that it's very good at spotting and then annotating loops which makes it much easier to understand the structure of a function just from the assembler. So this looks like a loop here, so if we step to the start of the loop, get a byte from where EDX is pointing, well EDX is our pointing at our registration code string, move it into BL and then compare with AL. So there's the first character in BL and there's this 2D which happens to be a dash in ASCII in AL. So it's doing a comparison with that, and now it's got the next character, and is comparing that with a dash as well. So it looks like this loop is iterating through our string, looking for a dash, which is quite a reasonable thing for uh, a serial number to have, because quite often it's a number followed by a dash followed by another number. So this is going to return false for us, or null, because we haven't got any characters, any dash characters in our string. So next time round we'll put one with a dash in there, so we'll use, let's get our current breakpoints up first, view breakpoints, we'll delete that breakpoint and set a breakpoint here with F2. So now we'll jump straight to this location uh, the next time round. So we'll hit play and there we go. Um, we get the error box. I'll enter the same name as last time but this time in the registration code we'll include a dash character in there and see if we get any further in the validation. So there's the call with the push 2D, that's the dash character, push ESI, that's our complete serial number. So we'll just use F8 this time, step straight over it, and the return value is indeed the pointer to where the dash character exists within the string. So that's that's worked as we expected. Uh, at that point there was a move 0 there, so that's effectively null terminating the string at the point of the dash character which was here so effectively you've you've isolated the first part of the string um, all the characters before the dash and then that gets pushed onto the stack the first part and then there's a call and the return value of the call is this BC614E now that's very important because if I, if I bring up calculator and enter that value so it's BC614E in decimal that's the first part of our serial number. So this function call here is obviously some kind of convert string to integer function. 
so that's very important because that's the first time that we've got some integer value based on what I've entered as a serial number so then there's a call to the function again and this time it's the second part of the the serial string so similarly that presumably is that as an integer or as a hex integer I should say so we'll continue on here and there's another loop here um, it's using things from ECX and ECX appears to be pointing somewhere within our string and there's things like multiplications and additions going on in here and there's an ink of ECX so it's moving gradually through the string doing calculations on the way so this looks like the hashing function for the the name part of the sequence so this should be the last time it runs and then it gets out of the loop and there's a comparison with whatever's at EBP minus 4 as a local variable and Ollie is telling us that it's that BC 614E value so this is a direct comparison between what we entered as a part of a serial number and some hash value that was produced by processing the gimme a milk string so really we want this to match here because we've entered this but it's produced this 1F85 so what we'll do is get our breakpoints up again we'll delete this one because we've got further and we'll put a break here oops wrong button F2 and we'll also make a note of this 1F85 I'll bring up notepad we'll just put 1F 85 in there and we want to be entering it as a decimal so 1F85 8069 I'll copy that paste in there so that's the first part of our serial so we'll run and again incorrect but this time the first part of our serial we now know is 8069 still don't know the second part but we're getting there and this time the comparison matches so that's going to get a bit further and now there's a second loop here doing similar kind of thing multiplications and additions with EBX accumulating the result and at the end of it there's another comparison this time it's with EBP minus 8 rather than minus 4 so that's quite possibly the second part of the string uh, the registration code so we'll run it through again as you can see it's gradually making its way through the string over there there's where we entered, that's the 87654321 as hex and this is the value it's calculated CE112 so the second part of our string CE112 and as a decimal we can use calculator again CE112 decimal 844050 we'll copy that so we now think the valid serial number for give me a milk should be 8069-844050 so let's copy that and rerun so this time we'll get that oh we forgot to move the breakpoint on so this is we're about to do the first comparison 1F85 that worked then there was our second loop so we can skip that and put a breakpoint straight there uh, F9 will run to the next breakpoint and there we've now got a match so if we start running normally now your registration has been entered successfully
and there we go so we haven't patched or cracked the application in any way but we've by examining the code we've inferred what our registration code for a particular name should be just by examining how it's processed and what comparisons are made we'll run through the registration process again but this time we'll pay more attention to the algorithm used to produce the hash value of the string because we we now want to extract that to our own little program but as last time first we need to remove our registration details so that we can restart the program unregistered <laughs> 